In this tutorial, I want to show you how to set up a model of a camera lens in Blender using the Opticore add-on to create the lens models and to render an image with this camera lens with the Lux Core Render Engine. Now, camera lenses in general are quite a complex topic. There is a lot to talk about, lots of different designs that you could show, lots of optimizations or limitations to the rendering technique. But in this video, I just want to focus on a simple lens model to show you how to set it up in Luxcore and how to get to the first results. And what you can see here is an example scene of uh, roughly what it's going to look like in the end to give you an idea what you can expect. But we're going to set this up from scratch. And first, of course, we need a lens design that whose parameters uh, we can use to set up our model. And uh, one option where you can get such parameters, uh, such lens designs from, is the free software WinLens, which is available from the optics company Keoptic. And it offers all the basic um, features that we need, like viewing the lens specifications and viewing some performance charts, which we can also use to compare our uh, model in Blender and to see if what we build actually works. And also Keoptic offers a free lens library with a lot of different designs um, yeah, that, we can, that we can use and build on. And I've already downloaded both WinLens and this lens library. So first I want to open this and show you what it looks like that we have in there. So WinLens, I'm going to go straight to opening a lens file. And in the WinLens library, there are some uh, examples as well as uh, library lenses. And they are, they are grouped into different designs like double Gauss lenses, which are um, yeah, a standard and widely used design type for uh, prime lenses. There are laser focus systems. There are zoom lenses, which are quite complex. And what I'm going to use here today, triplet lenses. And I'm going to use the triplet number five because it's going to be a good example. And the first thing that opens is a drawing of the lenses. So triplet, it has three lenses and there are some basic parameters. It just tells us here in the description, triplet with an F number of three and a horizontal field of view of 24 degrees. And the object focus here or the focus of this lens by default is set to infinity. Now in the plot, we can also go into uh, drawing options and add in the image plane so we can see also where our detector will need to be, where the image is focused. And more important, under tables, we find a table of surface specifications. And this is how lenses are typically specified in terms of a sequence of surfaces. So surface number one will be the front surface of the first lens, surface number two, the rear surface of the first lens, surface number three, the first front surface of the second lens and so on, as well as the image plane and also not very easy to see here just behind the second lens. Maybe I can zoom in for you. There are some little red dashes here, which is an location of an aperture stop, which also we are going to want to model in Blender. And for each surface, now there are several parameters that we will also need. So firstly, of course, the surface radius of the radius of curvature of the surface. In this example, all the surfaces are spherical. We are not considering aspheric elements here. Then there is a separation, which basically gives you the thickness of the lens. So for the first surface, the separation is then the distance on the central axis from the first surface to the second surface. Then next follows here in the glass column, the material that follows after the surface. So for the first lens, this is a glass type called SK4 made by Schott with a refractive index of, he well, says 1.62. If we click on it, we get um, some more numbers at different wavelengths and uh, more accuracy. Um, I'm not going to consider chromatic aberration in this video. So I'm just going to use the value at 546 nanometers. So next there would be the Abbe number, which indicates dispersion. But as I said, we're ignoring that. And there's also the half aperture here. So which would be the 
outer radius of the lens to give us its total size. And this is specified for all um, surfaces from surface to surface, including the aperture stop and the finally the distance from the last lens to the detector that we're going to need. And these settings we're going to now take and copy over into Blender. And for that, first we need to set up a dummy scene. I'm also going to limit my window here to the um, right half of the screen so I can have it side by side with Blender. So I'm going to create an empty scene, just doing this quickly before shrinking Blender. Now I'm going to just delete everything and choose LuxCore first of all. Also, I'm going to save this file in case I get any crashes. We're going to start out with the CPU render engine. And in the world tab, I'm also going to deactivate the skylight, which is set by default. Now, before we actually get to the lenses, um, I first want to start preparing and setting up the materials. So I just uh, create a cube, which I'm going to call material dummy. I'm going to create myself a second screen where I'm going to have a material node editor as well as a volume node editor. Now I can start adding materials to my material dummy. So first I will add a glass. And in the uh, surface sheet here in Winlands, we can see the glasses we have are SK2. We have F2 and then SK4 again. So we will need two glasses, SK4 and F2. So we're naming the first one SK4 and just adding a second glass, call that F2. Now we're going to specify the glasses with um, interior and exterior volumes, which for the simple lens is not strictly necessary actually. We could just use the IOR setting here, um, but it's maybe good to do it anyways because um, in another video where I will show achromatic doublet lenses, this will be important to have it uh, using volumes. So first we need a world volume. Just going to go to the world tab and just add the default word volume. It'll just be clear volume with IOR of one. So that's exactly what we need. So in our material, let's start with SK4. We can then just add a pointer to the word volume and assign it as the exterior volume of this glass. And then I'm just going to add in a second new volume going to name that SK4 vol just to keep track of it. And now I'll open up here my detailed view of refractive indexes and copy in the value for 546 nanometers, which is 1.615212. The precision of that will probably be cropped by Blender, but that won't matter for us. And then I'm going to the F2 material and repeat. So first the world volume the exterior volume and add a new volume, call that F2 vol and open up my refractive index info again and add the quite similar value of 1.624081. Just make sure to save and double check actually here we have SK4 vol with 1.615 and F2 has F2 wall with 1.624. Okay, so this is the um, setup of the glass materials. Um, while we're at it with the dummy materials, I'm actually going to add a matte material for the detector, which I'm just going to make fully white. And I'm going to add another matte material, call it black, and just make that perfectly black. So those are all the materials we will uh, need for now. So I'm going to go back into the 3D viewport. I'm going to just make my material dummy invisible. I will go into side view. And from there, we can start adding the lenses. So uh, mesh optical optics, I'm going to add a lens, open up the parameters. And um, I can start off now with the separation, which will be the center thickness of the lens. So I'm just going to work here instead of units of meters and millimeters, and I'm just going to enter a value of six. And then the 
aperture of this radius will be 16.7. So that's here lens radius, 16.7. So this is now rather large. Now the first surface radius is 40.1. And the second surface radius is minus 537. Since the last video I made, um, the first introduction video to OptiCore, I mentioned that there's a convention with positive and negative um, surface radii. I have since then changed the convention for the second surface so that you can really copy one-to-one -one the surface radii as they are given in a lens design software and we don't have to worry about these signs anymore. Okay, so that's the surface radii, it's the lens radius, the lens center thickness are set. Just now we need to assign the SK4 material, which we can do also here in the OptiCore um, specifications because we have set up the material dummy and that's the first lens setup. Now we're just going to add a second lens and first of all, we will want to shift it to the right location. So for that, we need to add together the separation of the first lens and the air gap. And here I'm using a negative direction, so it will be minus six, minus 10 for me. So the aperture of the second lens is 14.9, bit smaller. Its center thickness is one. The material, before I forget this, is F2. Surface one has a radius of minus 47 and surface two has a radius of plus 40. And we can go into a wire view to check that this looks basically as we expect. So that's the second lens setup. Save. Now, just let's go straight to the third lens, which I'm just going to switch back immediately to SK4 material. Now we again have to add up some numbers, minus six, minus 10, minus one thickness of the other lens, minus three for the air gap to the aperture stop and minus 7.8 for the air gap to the third lens. The radius of this lens is 15.1. Its central thickness is six material we have set. And the first surface has a radius of 234.5. And the second radio surface has a radius of minus 37.8. Nine. And again, this looks in comparison to the wind lens drawing as you would expect. So I can again save and thus I have concluded the setup of my three lenses. But hopefully I have not made any mistake. So what do we do next? Next we can set up our detector. So for that I'm just going to add a plane, let's call that detector. Um, I'm going to look now the image here has a radius, it's quite wide of 42. Let's round it up to 45 and uh, double that for the entire width. So let's make this just 90 large at the detector material, rotate it into the right orientation. And again, I need to add up a lot of numbers for the location. So it's minus six, minus 10, minus one, minus three, minus 7.8, minus six, and finally minus 84.93. And now additionally, I'm not quite sure why this is done. Um, there is an additional distance going back minus 0 0.3 millimeters from the last specified um, surface here. Um, to the actual focus plane. I'm not quite sure what this convention is for, but we need to add 0 0.3 again for comparison later with other figures from wind lens that we're going to look at. I'm going to top view. I'm going to add a camera. Let's make it larger so we can see it. So rotate it into the right orientation and just move it somewhere in front of the detector. I'm going to make the image square because so is the detector at the moment. And I'm going to make it an orthographic camera, which I recommend for this. And for now, let's leave the orthographic scale at the default value. We'll be changing that in a moment anyways. So detector set up, camera set up, lenses are set up. Now we will need a uh, aperture. 
This one I'm going to create based on a circle. Let's make it round. And it has a radius of 13.17. So we're going to do that. I'm actually going to add another circle in. So with a radius of 20, a bit larger. Join the two, bridge the edge loops, take all the faces, extrude it a slight bit to make it solid. Uh, let's make sure the surface normals are correct and assign the black material. And we're going to have to put that in the right location as well. So again, some number adding 6, 10, 1 and minus 3 to give the right location of the aperture stop. And we can just check in the side view. It's now just slightly behind the second lens, which is consistent with what we see in wind lens. So aperture is uh, also in place. And with that set up, we can actually start testing our lens to see if it works and performs as we would expect. For this, we will need a light source. And to test it, um, I'm going to create an area source and make it a laser which is going to give us a parallel infinite light, which is good to compare with the wind lens parameters. Now we want to just roughly underfill the um, front aperture. So radius of 16 should do, double that up would be a size of 32. That's the laser. Now to uh, see an image, I'm just going to activate auto brightness to uh, find it first. And for the laser, we will need light tracing 100% because path tracing doesn't make sense with the laser. And we can hop into the, ah, and uh, I almost forgot, which I often forget about, is we need to increase the total path depth to make sure that we get enough specular bounces through the lenses. So we can hop into our camera view, just limit the field of view a little. Remember, this is now six wide because we've kept the default orthographic scale. And let's hope there was no mistake. If I go into rendered view, ha, we see a spot rendered at the center. So I'm going to just reduce the scale. Orthographic scale of one is still more than we need. 0 0.5, well, let's go to 0 0.4 for now. And I can reduce the gain a bit to 0.1. You see this uh, spot looks actually a bit fancy. There are of course some limitations of the 32-bit floating point accuracy we can expect from Blender, but well, that's just uh, what it is. But at our scale of 0.4, we're getting some spot. But how do we know that uh, this is actually correct? Well, we can compare again with wind lens since we have it and check the spot diagram which it offers. So WinLens now offers us this uh, spot diagram for in focus, out of focus, forward and backward and different field angles. Um, now the different colors are overlapped here. So I'm going to uh, just select the mid wave in green. And it's the in focus on axis here in the top middle that we will want to compare to. Now we need to also uh, check the scale of this, which is currently set to a half scale of 0.1. So I'm going to double that up to 0.2 for comparison with our image. And then I'm just going to squeeze the screen a bit to make it square and zoom in to get a good comparison with uh, what we see in Blender. Now, this is a bit large, so we can reduce our image here, put them side by side. And you can see, well, WinLens only creates certain uh, ray fans. So it's not a full, um, fully filled image, but our image, uh, our focus spot is roughly the same size as what we see here in the spot diagram in WinLens. So this actually confirms that our camera model in Blender seems to work. I could now um, go also through the different off axis angles or out of focus angles to compare um, the shapes. I'm just going to, for time reasons, not do that now. You can uh, try this yourself if you want to. Just rotate the laser around the entrance uh, aperture and uh, then you can check, um, find the focus location on your detector and compare. Um, but just for now, for demonstration, I would like to show 
a bit more complex uh, image before we close this video. So before I forget, I'm just going to increase the auto graphic scale to just slightly um, less than the detector. I'm going to delete the area source and for purpose of um, yeah, avoiding stray light here, we're going to need to make ourselves a little a little um, lens box because we're going to render an image of an HDRI in the background. So I'm going to just copy the aperture, put it at the origin. Accidentally gave it a Z shift, so it's a bit smaller than the first lens, but actually we're going to um, yeah, ignore that for now. Then what else will we need? We will need to probably make the outer rim of this a bit larger to cover it up at the front. And then we can make ourselves, I would say for now we do use a hollow cube. Just make that rather large, duplicate it, shift it slightly forward and a bit smaller, then we can use Boolean operations on the cubes. Let's delete the inner cube and see if that worked. Yeah, now we have some open box here. You can actually make a bit longer in X direction. We're also going to give this the black material. Let's go back into side view. Make sure this is over our um, detector. Actually, now we'd have some gap here with the disk I just realized. So I'm maybe just going to shrink it down a bit. And yeah, so just so we have a um, quick black box and some apertures set up around our detector. And then we can uh, open an HDRI image. I've already just downloaded some yesterday, which we could use. Some 8K image should be large enough for this purpose here. And also we will need to switch back from light tracing to path tracing for this. And Let's go into rendered view and hope that everything worked out. Oh yes, I forgot I have got the optics viewport denoiser on. I actually don't want that now. Now the image uh, doesn't render out very fast um, right now, but we can already see something builds up. So let me switch back and change to GPU rendering because that will make it a lot faster. Let's just use a bit uh, smaller image resolution for now to just quickly as a demonstration, get a rendering and you can see an image of the landscape, which is here a beach and some trees actually forms. And yeah, let's wait for the 10 second refresh. Yeah, so Brightness adjustment, got a bit dark. Yeah, our camera lens actually renders an image of the HDRI and you even see right now with the default orientations um, that the image is flipped upside down as you would expect from a camera lens. So this is uh, the, my first video on how to set up a full camera lens. So you have seen that we will need to um, read the lens parameters from a lens design file surface by surface, create the lenses and blender accordingly with OptiCore. We have set up a detector as a plane with a matte material and an orthographic camera in front of it. Depending on the lens design, at some point um, we will need an aperture stop. Um, and then I've built a simple uh, black housing for the lens to avoid uh, stray light on the detector. And then we were able to render an HDRI image successfully through the lens. And in upcoming videos, I will go into more details like 
more complex uh, lens design, give a bit um, longer example and uh, performance of that with also achromatic doublets. How to set those up where two glasses are fused together. And uh, then I will also talk about different uh, performance aspects of this. So obviously um, such a lens will not render as fast as if you use an uh, ordinary yeah, blender type or looks core render type camera. Um, but yeah, how to um, perhaps optimize this and what you will be, uh, what you can expect of this.